Sonic is using an expert system to dive devices the delusion affecting all of the judgment. So in this paper, the author mainly talk about three aspects. First is judgment, auditor's judgment and decision making are essential to complete an audit. And the second point is with the help of expert system, audit expert, the experiment results show that it's mitigated the dilution effect. And uh, additional VPA results show that the less experienced auditors will misclassify the risks which will have negative impact to the judgment and decision making. So what is dilution effect? Which means the judgment biases that occurs when too much focus on irrelevant information. This makes me think about a um, um, material, um, material, materiality, materiality and about the audit risk. Um, materiality, by its definition, is the threshold about the missing and incorrect information and financial statement is considered to have an impact on the decision making of users. So in some occasion, this misjudgment will cause the auditors issue the different audit opinions. And in the part of introduction, the author state that the auditors develop judgment and express their opinions on the financial statement based on this judgment they have. And auditors need to be independent and fair when they express their audit opinions. But auditors can't completely avoid the biases because they express the subjective opinions on the financial statement. And in my opinion, auditor, auditors are human beings too. And their judgment always come along with their experience and mindset. So it just like inherent uh, audit risk should take into consideration. And also need to mention the auditor's professional competency. Competency, yes. Which is different to measure under uh, a lot of different situations. So the fa factors such as a procedural task and accountability may not improve or all judgment even exaggerate the dilution effect. And this audit expert system, according to the author, completely eliminated the dilution effect by Uh, the third part of this paper is about background theory and hypothesis. So about the background, the auditors experience many biases when they facing relevant and irrelevant information, and then develop an inappropriate judgment which will become a threat to the quality of audit. And less experienced auditors tend to make more conservative assessment about the audit risk. And high risk assessment decreases the audit effectiveness. And low risk assessment can negatively affect audit efficiency. So only the only factor is experience will affect the dilution effect.
which means which car is the technology you should step in, and which car should eliminate the technology, like basically used by humans, right? And he mentioned about the three hypotheses. Uh, hypothesis one is that less experience auditor's judgment will be different according to the relativity of the information. Hypothesis two is that less experienced auditors will have uh, will make risk assessment close to experienced one with the help of expert system. The hypothesis three states that if less experienced auditors using the expert system, the relativity of the information will not influence their risk judgment. So the methodology and research design. In this paper, the author using the experiment and control groups. And the total sample size is 46, with 12 of them using the VPA. And uh, dependent variables is the final judgment, which is uh, nominal level variables. And independent variable one is use of the expert system and independent variable two is the fault tools. So the model basically they use expert system. So in my opinions, it is better if using the interval level variables. Maybe the author can use like multivariable analysis, such as that. And the result of the paper mainly has three points. The first is an expert system has no impact on auditors in a relevant only information environment. So number two is the use of an expert system mitigates the dilution effect. And the third is the results support the hypothesis one, two, and three. So the result of VPA, so the dilution effect occurs because of Participation overweight the non financial irrelevant information and underweight the financial relevant information. So, in all, the result of the study is that the audit expert system will serve as a reliable and effective decision aid for auditors. Also, there is the potential of saving audit costs and improving the audit effectiveness and efficiency with the help of the system. The paper also has several limitations. Um, the first is that the generalization of the conclusion is only based on the experiment. And in personal Opinions that the scientific research design should include at least 50 samples, so it's only 46. And the subject design itself, it has some limitation too. But, but in all, I'm wondering if the continuous auditing can be applied to this topic. Then some of the uh, inherent risk of the subjective views can be avoided through so this process. According to what I learned. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, could you leave that up, please? Leave that up. What? Le just le could you leave that slide up? Okay. Okay. So, um, what the the objective of, of assigning this was twofold. One to you know, talk about how we, to start thinking about using technology in the audit environment. And this was an expert system, and, and it was a pre, actually, the expert system was based on an expert system that's used in the medical field. Uh, and so Danielle was able to work with the developers of that system, expert system, to modify it to an audit environment. Um, and then she got partners and managers who are experienced, uh, who we would argue are more experienced in fraud detection. 
uh, and fraud risk assessment than less uh, seniors or staff people to train the system. And so, uh, you know, that, that's what was used. So in terms of, and then the other point is then, you know, in this study, um, she also collected verbal protocols because uh, her thinking, uh, and this is, this is from her dissertation, her thinking was, well, okay, we, so we know that the dilution effect occurs because we've seen this in other research, um, and it's been shown time and time again. It only impacts less experienced auditors. Um, so why? And if the expert system, let's look at why this occurs. There's been some, you know, some speculation about it. But, and if the expert system is, since the expert system diminishes this, what is it? Like, what is it that auditors are learning when they use this, ex uh, that they don't already know? Because they already know this stuff. Um, but what is it? So that was the point of the verbal protocol, is to understand what was going on uh, in the auditor's decision process. Um, so in terms of, so some of the things, one of the, 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 chal the challenges that you have with uh, experiments is you have to be able to, there's the, the trade-off of internal versus external validity, right? Um, and so, and you don't want to be so, go so far to one end that you, you know, obliterate the other. Right, so you have to try to strike a, a, a good balance and then try to understand, well, what is the objective of the study? Um, because the, obviously, you, you're, if you try to have uh, external validity, you, you can't put everything in the experiment, right? You, it's just not re realistic. You'll never be able to capture everything. So you're trying to make it as, um, for that particular task that you're examining or the question that you're asking, you try to get um, uh, you know, as much external validity as possible, but recognizing there's a limitation on the amount of external validity um, in terms of the generalizability. What you can say about this study is the, this phenomenon with less experienced auditors has been found time and time again. Research has documented that auditors with less experience um, you know, have, you know, they fall victim to the, you know, dilution effect. Like they incorporate irrelevant information, even though they know that information is irrelevant, which was the purpose of trying to conduct the, of the verbal protocol is to try to get a, a better understanding of that. Um, and so the task is an appropriate task for, for these auditors. Um, and, you know, yet, I mean, one of the questions we could have is there, and this is what you, would um, use of an expert system not work on certain auditors, right? So there's no reason to believe that there was something unique about the auditors that she used in her experiment, because they were, you know, uh, less experienced auditors, uh, which, and their responsibilities, and the task, that it was, the task was one that less experienced auditors perform all the time. Right, so it's that's why you, you know the generalization is I think is not as big an issue because it's not that she came up with this unique task. This is a task that that experienced group would perform. I don't care what firm you work for, you're you you do fraud risk assessment at that, and all you're doing is assessing the risk of fraud. Right, so that so so I think that mitigates this this concern somewhat about the generalization. The other thing. Um, so she, in this experiment, um, she had the relevant group, um, uh, the group that got relevant information and the group that got relevant and irrelevant information. So she had a one by two, basically. She only had one manipulator because everyone used the expert system, right? Because what she was trying to measure is, uh, you know, would, would, so did the, did the, use of the expert system improved the fraud risk judgments of the relevant group? No, because they were, you know, didn't make a noticeable difference. But in the group that got both irrelevant and relevant information, it did change, right? So normally our guidelines that we try to follow in experimental research is that um, if we can get a lot more, we try to get a lot more. But at a minimum, we try to have 20 per cell, right? So you try to have at least 20 per condition. 
And in this case, she had a one, it's a one by two, so 40 would have been an acceptable. Um, obviously, you always try to get more, but uh, it, so that's, you know, so with psych studies, you're going to get a lot of people. So what we're used to seeing in psych studies, because they're going after, they're using student populations, they can get access to a lot more people. Um, but in an audit research, you know, like that Ted and Mock study, that Biz and Mock study, you just saw 200 auditors is amazing. That's not the norm, especially now in this environment. So, but the, the general rule of thumb is that we try to get at least, at a minimum, 20 per cell. The least you want to get is 15, but everyone strives for 20 or more per cell, so per condition. So that's why you, you don't see a lot. Most studies you'll see a two by two, where, which is four conditions because you know having a two by three now increases the amount of people that you have to get and so it, um, but you'll see for example maybe in um, uh, financial behavioral financial you might see more subjects because you're going after different subjects pool the study that um, uh, I had that we're going to run uh, as a juror study jur uh, audit reliability study using jurors we're going to try to get 500 people Right, but we're going to use MTurk. So, you know, we're gonna, you know, you guys know what uh, MTurk is, right? Amazon mechanical something or another. Um, but you basically people go on and they you pay them to, to do uh, these experiments. And for the question that we're asking is because we're trying to get uh, a, people that would resemble a jury. Um, who would, could possibly serve on a jury. So in that case, we could use that as a vehicle to do that. So a lot of it, you know, you're going to be, your subject pool is going to drive how big a sample you can get. But the rule of thumb is we try to have at least 20 per cell. Um, so the, I wasn't sure about what the third point was, that the subject design is a limitation. What were you thinking there? Yeah, I think, like, um, I actually have two questions about mm -hmm. this. How to define less experienced auditors? Like in the paper, it's mm -hmm. like she states several uh, other people's idea, like how to measure the less experienced auditor, how many years they have experience. Mm -hmm. so I have a question about that. And the second is like, um, is that the expert system really reliable? So I have basically. This is what I'm Okay, yeah. so in terms of your first question, how do you measure uh, less experienced auditors? So there's two things you're going to look at. Um, it's not always driven by the number of years of experience, right? Uh, the number of years that you've been. So generally speaking, in years of experience, less experienced auditors in, in, in an accounting, I mean, in an auditing, auditing context, will be auditors who are staff people or seniors. Right? They're less experienced uh, as compared to partners and managers who are more. So there's, uh, and, that, and, I, and I think that that's reasonable because if you, certainly if you're a staff person, you don't have a lot of experience auditing. So people who would have somewhere between, you know, less than, less than four years of experience. But you also have to look at the task because you could have a manager who's not experienced, right? If, if the task is one that's complex. So, I would say we, I, you know, I have another study, um, and we looked at uh, we were looking at fair value, and we use auditors, uh, and our request was that we would only have auditors who are experienced uh, in doing fair value research. So even though those, I mean, sorry, fair value auditors, like that's all they do. So they have expertise even though they might be a senior with three or four years of experience, the fact is that, that all they do is fair value auditing in fi on, on financial instruments, they have the expertise. So they would be considered experienced. But in another study, they, you know, in a general task, they would not be necessarily considered experienced. So, it, but I think a, a fair cutoff is looking at the years of experience for a task like this, which is a complex task, but a general task that auditors perform. And so, uh, at that level, so, uh, you know, staff people, 
with two to three years of experience would be considered less experienced auditors. Also, there was another study that was done, and that study looked at partners and managers, I think, versus uh, the, the subject pool that uh, is used in this study, and found that this dilution effect only occurs with those types of people with less experience. It did not occur in partners and managers. Managers and partners did not experience, ex um, um, you know, show that they, uh, that they felt prey to the dilution effect. So their decisions were consistent. They, they did not incorporate irrelevant information in their decision process, okay? Um, they ruled it out. So that's, that's how. Um, in terms of the, uh, in the um, ex as I said, the um, expert system is based on a validated system that is used in medical research. This is, a pro this is a system that's out there that's used by, uh, not medical research, in the medical field. So this is a proven, validated system. Now, Danielle adopt had them adapted to the audit environment, and she, had the, she validated it by having it uh, you know, trained with partners. She pilot tested it and so forth. So you know, there is a possibility that, uh, again, you have to evaluate, well, why would uh, these auditors be any different from auditors in general. Um, but this is something, it's new. You would have this, you, you know, system of this nature used again and, and uh, other research too. Um, so one of the things that, you know, she's, I think uh, this, she published the, the paper about the expert system itself, the d design of it. I think she either published it or is under review somewhere. Um, but, you know, you would like to see this type of system used in other areas, maybe, uh, outside of the fraud area, maybe, you know, um, where it might be applicable and that would help to, to validate it some more. Okay. Yeah. I have uh, another question. I think it was on your, the background slide. I don't know if you can find it. Yeah, so the, the third bullet, high risk assessment decreased audit effectiveness and low risk assessment uh, negatively affects audit efficiency. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like, I, I'm just curious, like, maybe, maybe you can explain, like, mm -hmm. okay. I would think it would be the other way. Well, Maybe I'm interpreting it wrong. Right. So okay. So let's think about what we're, ta we're talking about for a risk assessment. So if you, yeah. if you, uh, let's think about this low risk. Um, if, I, I don't know. The way I interpreted it was if mm -hmm. you assess everything as high, the uh, audit effectiveness, you right. most likely perform more substantive testing, more controls testing, so you'd have higher audit effectiveness, but probably lower lower. Yeah, and efficiency. I'm wondering if that that's right, and I'm wondering if that's backwards. Yeah, so I yeah. just didn't. I yeah. just wanted to double check. Maybe I'm yeah, missing I, I something. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. So, well, I think what she meant in the paper is, if the auditor incorrectly assesses high risk, then you're doing more, but you really don't need to do more. Oh, right, okay, that's right. Wait, right. let me think about this. Right. So, but, but wait a minute, so if the auditor assesses... Incorrectly high, yeah, you're doing more. If they incorrectly so assess you, high risk. I would think that'd be mean less efficiency, not mm -hmm. less effectiveness. I would think it would be more effective, but less efficient. I have to double check that, but what it uh, could mean, um, I have to, uh, I don't to know. go back and look at the um, papers that she's citing. But what it could mean is that if you incorrectly, you're, you're taking away, uh, you're, if you, you're spending time on the wrong area, the wrong area. So as a result of that, you're not as if, okay. so you're taking time away from, uh, audit time away from, or focus from more high risk areas. But I have to go back and look yeah. at those papers that she cited. And then the low risk, um, so if you, Assess, yeah. I, I don't know. I have to think about that. Again. I'll, I, I need yeah, to look the, at those papers. Again. I guess maybe some of them can be interpreted. Yeah. In multiple ways, but the yeah. low one, I, I'm not. I don't see. Yeah, that's a good point. How that would reduce efficiency? Maybe I don't know. Maybe just the full explanation would probably. So if you assess fraud risk 
much. Yes, yeah, too much. Assess for at risk to love. Incorrectly assessed for at risk is and no. Unless it decreases the efficiency because you find it at the tail end of the audit and then you get it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't remember those. I haven't looked at those papers in a while that she cited. Okay. So I have to go back. I, I don't remember it. But that's so a good point. Exactly. Coal is inappropriately high for risk assessment can lead to decreased audit effectiveness. Yeah. Well, an appropriately low assessment of risk can negatively affect audit efficiency. Yeah. Or I, it may, it may or may not have an effect on audit effectiveness. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I have to. I don't. I have to go back and take a look at Excuse that. Me, That's a good point. Is that? Oh, it's seven. I just thought it was interesting because I'm yeah, wondering I think we, if I'm missing uh, probably need the concept. to explain it better yeah. in the bah, bah. yeah probably need to explain it better in the paper because it is uh, intuitively you yeah. would think otherwise yeah uh, I'm curious about the audit expert system what kind of uh, data they hold to training the the system they actually had partners and managers go through the same set of case facts, right? And so, um, and then, uh, you know, their, their assessments of it, right? So, and each time they, I, I don't know exact, like I don't know the, every single detail, but then each time that, that each partner or manager is updated the system, right? So, it, it, it's some, uh, I, I don't know the mechanics of it. Okay, it's a sort of a data uh, the auditors uh, uh, took from their work or some public data? No, they use the case. They use the case, okay. the partner's assessment of the case. Because you were trying, and that, that's one of the limitations, right? Because you had a very, uh, in the real world, what you would expect is that the system would be updated through real instances of fraud. Yeah. Right, so that it helps people understand uh, to better I identify what's fraud versus what's not. Um, so, but in this case, it was that she used experienced people who did not exhibit any of the dilution effect bias to uh, go through the case and update their and uh, and the system updated their assessments based on that. That's my limited understanding of how the actual system. How it works. It's it's a uh, this system is uh, from a company or a company. Company. Yeah. So this, as I said, this company has a a, a medical uh, system. They they, yeah. they have this expert system for use in the medical field, uh, where you in, you know you input information. It tells you what the symptoms are. It suggests you know uh, you know you put in the symptoms and stuff, and it suggests what the um, illness is. Uh, just that's a simple simplified explanation of it. So what, uh, I think what this company was, you know, uh, Danielle approached them, uh, and I, I don't know what her relationship was, but she approached them about, you know, she thought like, hey, would this work in an audit environment? And it's not new, we've had expert systems used in audit environments before, but she was thinking that in our context with where those papers were done earlier, we have different types of technology, um, this is uh, very interactive, um, and so she saw this system as this is this this might be something that we could adapt in an audit environment. Let's take, you know, here's a situation, a complex. You have because you basically have to diagnose the risk factors, right? Well, here are the risk factors to try to determine whether or not, uh, and the information that's in front of you to determine whether or not it's it's indicative of fraud like what the, your fraud risk assessment would be. So she looked at this as, well, is it possible to adapt this type of system in, a, in an audit environment? Let's try, let me look at it in this particular task where that's been shown to be more complex and obviously very judgmental, right? Because again, fraud risk assessment is a highly judgmental task and people will, and you see that experienced people don't experience it, it, this dilution effect, but, uh, less experienced people do. Um, what is it about them that makes it the, the case? So clearly as auditors gain more experience, they're better at risk assessment 
Um, but uh, what what's, to me was interesting about the dilution effect is it's not that auditors don't recognize the information is relevant. They know it's irrelevant. They'll tell you that it's irrelevant, but they're still incorporating it in their decision process. Hmm? No, they know it's irrelevant. Yeah, but they Well, obviously they're they're incorporating it, so I'm assuming that they think it's important. But why would you consider irrelevant information as important? The, the the idea of irrelevant information suggests that it's not important, right? Because it's irrelevant. Like you, so the idea that it's irrelevant would suggest to me that I wouldn't incorporate that information. It shouldn't have impact my judgment because it's not really relevant to the task at hand. But despite that they are, and it's, so it's what are the so what the what the verbal protocol is like? What is it about the characteristics of this? Can we learn anything about the characteristics of the irrelevant information that they're focusing on? Is it just some subset of the uh, you know because they had a few irrelevant cues there? So what is it like? And that's what we're trying to determine. So we're still this paper, as I said, this is Danielle's um, from her dissertation, and she asked me to work with her on this paper, so we're still working on trying to figure out how to uh, make this more of a, more than just it's an expert system, but I think in this case, the, the, the use of the verbal protocol analysis adds more, will add more heft to the paper, and will make it uh, a lot more um, interesting, I think, because it, it tries to get into what's really, not only did the expert system mitigated it, but what is it? What is it about irrelevant information? And then what is it about the expert system? It's not that they're just mimicking. Because actually with some of the verbal protocols, what we realized was, because one of the things that she gave them the option of doing is, because the expert system, you should not just change your judgment based on the expert system. The expert system is there as a talk to help direct you through this information processing, to think about the relevant cues or think about forward risk cues and then use your judgment to assess whether it's met. Um, so she gave them the option of after they went through this, um, the use of the expert system, they could, she, do you want to change your judgment? Um, even though the expert system says, well, you know, and I'm paraphrasing, based on this, this is a low risk, because it was a low fraud risk setting. Uh, we found that people did not change their the people, the ex, it was not, overall people changed, but the people who were going through the verbal protocol analysis, uh, a number of them didn't change their opinion. So something's the verbal protocol analysis is interacting in some way with that decision process, just going through the verbal protocol analysis. Because even though they still, look, overall people change, on average people change after going through the, but the, for that subset of people in a verbal protocol, they didn't change there, even though the, they agreed with the expert system, but they still didn't want to change. So. Okay, I think that's it. Any, uh, any final thoughts, questions?